Well, it's still week 15, uh, and week 15 is still bringing us all the magic and glory that it has wanted to, but we navigate the waters. We get ready for your semifinals. It's a really important time. Maybe you lost an important running back like Leonard Fournette. We got the waivers going on today's show. Subscribe to this channel. Leave us a comment. Let us know that you're still alive and you survived week 15. Like the episode. Enjoy. Today's show is brought to you by pristineauction.com. Pristine Auction, tell me more. I'm sure you've heard us talk about Pristine Auction, but let me lay it out for you. If you go to pristineauction.com, what they have over there, thousands of auctions on sports memorabilia. Wait, they have auctions on Pristine Auction? Yes, Mike, they do. Pristineauction.com. What can I win? Um, People don't know maybe what they have over there, and they have tons of gear from your favorite players, so like an A.J. Brown signed jersey. Signed. Authenticated. Like A.J. Brown signed it. He signed it, and uh, we've been over to those facilities. We've seen the JSA authenticators on site for some of the property or some of the stuff that they get in, and like Debo Samuel signed jersey, $61 was the final bid. Saquon signed jersey, $67. These are great gifts. These are great for your wall. These are great for our studio. Go to pristineauction.com and use the code BALLERS when you sign up, and you will get a $10 credit. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, still football time. Still football time indeed. Well, it's still week 15. What is week 15, you say? Well, it's the week where Sony Michelle's more relevant than Tom Brady and Darren Waller. It's the week where... Travis Kelsey rules all and siphon the power from everybody else. I mean, I woke up and it was last night was so strange. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that plenty of people out there felt that of the, just you have such a routine and you, your body clock just builds up, you know, these things signal this. And yesterday the, uh, because of the early Monday game, It starts getting dark towards the end of that, and then that game is over, but it's dark outside, and my body's like, well, time to go to sleep, (laughs) (laughs) and it's 6 p.m. And Matt and Aggie tried to put you to sleep. Oh, yes, he did. What a sensational handful of games we had yesterday. We we had this period of time where the, the focus on bad coaching was solely on Urban Meyer. Yeah. And, you know, then when I hold him up to, to Matt Nagy, I'm like, all right, Matt Nagy's not so bad. Or is he? <laughs> but I don't think Mike Zimmer's much better. <laughs> I mean, between the refs and the head coaches yesterday, it's about done with old week 15, but we got two more games tonight. Oh, this, this is full Groundhog Day. It will never stop. I have to put my season on the, uh, on the back, the muscled back of DK Metcalf and Odell Beckham which is always a good time. But uh, Hunter Renfro could not overcome week 15. Nope. He submitted. <laughs> and uh, the, what, you had 16-14, the Raiders beat the Browns in a punt fest. Yeah, uh, Derek Carr narrowly edges out Nick Mullins. Well, don't worry. Kirk Cousins threw for the fewest passing guards of his career yesterday, 87, <laughs> against a secondary that was 100% Missing. So 12 oh. for 24, 87 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah. One interception that was um, entertaining. Dalvin Cook had 28 carries that only resulted in 89 yards. In fact, he did not have a, a rush over 10 yards. It seemed like last week every rush was over 10 yards. I honestly, I, at the beginning of the game, there were a couple of those Dalvin Cook carries where it's just he reads the, the zone – 100% correct, and then he tripped. He, he's at top speed, and I'm like, oh, here we go again. It's another one of these Dalvin games, but no, week 15 made sure that that was not true. 
Uh, and then Justin Jefferson comes out, scores a touchdown in the beginning of the game, 10 targets again, and yet another inefficient performance for Jefferson. Four for 47 and one. Two straight weeks, right, where we've gotten this, oh, this is going to be a huge game, and then it, it was just okay, and yep. people needed more. Mm-hmm. Uh, Darnell Mooney, five for 63. David Montgomery was fine. 18 for 60. Justin Fields alternated between impressive runs and 15 yard sacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, here we are with the Rams Seahawks this evening (laughs) and the Washington football team and the Philadelphia Eagles. Hooray. We have uh, quite a bit on the show today. We've got waivers to talk through. We'll get you ready for those. They they may be running a day later in your league. Yes, that's true. And so, uh, which I know in our leagues, that's what we're doing with the two games tonight. Uh, if you didn't notice, Jay Grizz is in the house. Yes, week 15 claimed another victim. Jason. Jason Jason's not here. Jason's family in its entirety is going through the flu right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, trying to get through that before Christmas, so we wish him well and our thoughts and prayers there. Where um, hopefully they're waking up feeling better this morning. Now he's he said there were some stomach issues in the Moore household. We weren't sure if it was the flu or, in fact, last night's football. Right, it's di- a- impossible to distinguish between the two. <laughs> that is true. They don't have any tests that reveal <laughs> whether your gastro problems come straight from week fifteen or not. But um, if DK Metcalf scores four points tonight, it you, sets up you're a, in? it sets up an Al Borland versus Andy Holloway oh, that's what the world semifinal wants. matchup. Come on. Come on, DK. Wouldn't that be fun? You could Deal! look, yeah. I mean, it's DK Metcalf. There certainly hasn't been a game recently where he didn't score at least four points. Right? I want this out of the way early. Right? right? I want it out of the way He's early. DK Metcalf. If I get to ha- if I get to halftime. If we get to halftime and DK does not have four points and follow along at home, I've, I've realized there's nothing I can do to convince the fantasy universe to do do right by anybody this week. So nothing I say here, no, no amount of people watching the game are going to make any impact. But if I get to halftime, it will be a one-man show tomorrow because I will expire. Oh, man. I, I will expire or I will I will run. So far, I'll just go out for a midnight run and never return. I don't know what I don't know what I want to happen now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I I um obviously I want to win, but that's been further fueled by Al telling me this morning he'd rather play me than my opponent. Yeah. Oh, so you see that too? Well, your your opponent has Austin Eckler and Jonathan Taylor, <sighs> and Saquon Barkley, George and, Kittle. I mean, here's the thing: Jonathan Taylor plays the Arizona Cardinals. Right. In week sixteen, nope. those matched up against Jonathan Taylor. You, you better start the hail marys right now. I will just, just get them going all week long. I will be at that game, the Christmas game. Yes, ChristmasFootball dot com. Yes, I will be at that game. You two will not. So we will correct definitively. Oh, the curse! The test will be. I mean, you guys have been to a couple of them. They lost mm-hmm. horribly because yep. obviously you weren't good enough fans. Yes, and I will be there, and you will not, and therefore. We'll test it. Arizona against Indianapolis. I got a feeling I know the answer. Mm. It's not us. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's Cliff. It's, it's in fact the Arizona Cardinals. All right, let's move on. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. Yes, ChristmasFootball.com. I will be there. It will be the first game for my 10-year-old. Oh, that's so fun. On Christmas. So we're we're excited. Uh, Devin Singletary, where there's smoke, there's fire. Finished the running back 16 against Tampa. That was a tough matchup. Uh, number six last week against Carolina. That tells you so much about what's happened. I guess that would be this week still. I, I say last week, but it's still this week. Yep. Um, 93% of snaps. That was the surprise with Devin Singletary. So from an opportunity standpoint, this is fire. From a chance to repeat standpoint, this is smoke. I don't like him on the road against New England. And so, you know, do I think he'll have the majority of the snaps? Yeah, I do. I think this is indicative of where they're turning. And his success against Carolina, 22 for 86. Sure. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, Zach Moss is not a part of this plan, and Matt Breida is a fumbler. So Devin Singletary will get all the opportunity, and maybe that's all you need. I, I It could be where – the, the the Buffalo Bills a couple weeks ago, um, in the the windiest game that I can recall, they weren't able to establish the run the way that the Patriots were. But if you look at the Patriots over the course of the season, there have been several times that running backs have had success against them for fantasy purposes, and not just the elite. Like not it yeah, was Foreman it wasn't had a, just had a good game. Yeah, it was it wasn't just Johnny Taylor who. Had a, a great game against the Buffalo or against the Patriots, you know Tennessee, Carolina, the Jets back in the uh, in the old heyday of the of Mike White checking it down all the time. So you can have success, and if they really are going to move everything over to Devin Singletary, which it's a short trend, but that's all we kind of have to go off of in fantasy is the last two weeks. Devin Singletary has been their guy, and the fact that it was, um. A healthy scratch yet again for Zach Moss. So it's fire. That for you. I I think it's fire for the opportunity, and not maybe uh, maybe week sixteen you've got a better option than Devin Singletary, but he should be picked up uh, if he's out there because week seventeen is the Atlanta Falcons. And well, if and it, maybe you have Leonard Fournette, and suddenly you don't. Right, it, but I'm saying like if you go through week sixteen and the opportunity share is still the same for Singletary, then championship weekend he is going to be. Uh, a very strong running back play. Deonta Foreman, our other smoke fire candidate, running back 14 against Jacksonville, eight against Pittsburgh, 24 touches on 39% of snaps. Adam Koffler tweeted this out, averaging 19.7 touches on 40% of snaps. So he's not out there every play, but it doesn't really matter, right? This team's identity right now is um, it's running the football, controlling the clock. A.J. Brown was designated to return. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, I, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> so um, Deonta Foreman, this is the same thing as Singletary. It's it's certainly fire from an opportunity standpoint, but he was limited by an ankle injury on Monday's walkthrough. The game's Thursday night. Could have been a day of rest because you, you have a quick turnaround. He actually got, uh, he got shook twice in that game. It happened kind of early. Um, which I had missed. I missed that during Sunday's games because it was also like, why is Hilliard on the field so much? It was because Foreman was dealing with something. He was shooketh? Yes, he was, to his core Uh And then you had another one where I even sent the, the message through to our Slack. It was, oh, no. Deonta Foreman is grabbing uh, at, his, heel. at his heel, and he has – like he suffered a torn Achilles multiple years ago. So there was just like, oh, oh, crap. Like, here we go again. But he was able to come back in the game. So for him to be on the field only 39% of the time against Pittsburgh and see 25 opportunities, he is, he is Derrick Henry light in terms of opportunity right now, and I would keep riding with that against the San Francisco 49ers this week. He is the only back that they have that can do the things that they need done. Right. Which is, you know, get a short yardage play, goal line, um, be tough between the tackles. So he, he is kind of locked into that role uh, before the return of Henry. And it's, it's so delightful. Like, it is that the Achilles has – this is our first, at least mine, my first real oppor opportunity seeing somebody successfully come back from that injury and – have relevance in not only in the NFL but in fantasy football. I mean this at the running back at position. the running back position. Yeah. This gives hope for the dynasty value, the long term value of Cam Akers. Yeah, I think I think Cam Akers is going to make it back and be all right. I really do. hope so. Uh, that was where there's smoke, there's fire. Brought to you by Traeger Grills. Grilling season never ends with Traeger. Go to Traeger.com/footballers. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. We did have the updated injury news, which was really unfortunate that Chris Godwin indeed yeah. tore his ACL. So the initial report was an MCL sprain. Uh, it's an ACL, and he was a franchise player this that's, past year. Yes, that sucks so much for the man to be without it. Chris Godwin deserved a gigantic contract. He, It feels like he was a victim of uh, last year's all the COVID stuff where it shrunk the uh, – 
uh, the salary cap, and teams just weren't giving out really big deals. So now he has to convince a team coming off of a torn ACL at the end of the season, like normal recovery time, it would be shocking to see Chris Godwin ready to start the season. I mean, he's a, a player that a team will have to give a contract to knowing you won't have him for the first month. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. And then obviously in Dynasty and Keeper Leagues, it's going to make decisions more more difficult. Elijah Mitchell update. He has cleared concussion protocol. That wasn't what I was worried about. Right. Dealing with a knee injury, game is Thursday night. So if he can't turn it around, can't be active in that game, it's going to be Jeff Wilson and it's going to be Debo in the backfield. Mm -hmm. And maybe Al has one of those guys. Maybe I have the other one. <laughs> Uh, you have Zach Taylor saying Joe Mixon suffered an ankle sprain in week 15. We'll monitor that. A.J. Brown, I mentioned, returning from injured reserve. They have 21 days to activate him. This is big news, and we don't know the details because Austin Eckler didn't practice. Okay, that's not surprising, really, because right. he's been dealing with injury sharing snaps. It was originally reported he was one of the seven chargers placed on the COVID list. Later, it came out that he wasn't. Some people think this is just a procedural formality and that'll happen today. So we don't know. And Brooksy, I want you to break in if you find out any more information about Eckler um, being on the COVID list. You but got it. Jared Goff, Jamal Williams. Well, they. Oh, no, opposite. those are opposite. Yeah, opposite. Jared Goff is now on the COVID list. Jamal Williams is off. Travis Kelsey and Harrison oh. Butker are on the COVID list. Oh, no. Oh, what if week 15 was, um, no, the, no, what if no, it was the good week? No, no, no. Don't you put that evil on us? No. Okay. All right. There's no. a, uh, he can be back. There's a new protocol in the NFL. Yes. And so there is a, uh, unlike previous weeks where them entering the COVID list, put it at very low probability of playing. That is no longer the case. So it's a, keep your eyes on it all week. Make plans ahead of time. Yes. This is the waiver show. Make plans so that you have a pivot, but then hope for the best. Oh, and I, I will let you know, the pivot options for Travis Kelsey this week, sensational. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of auto fill-ins for Travis Kelsey? Yes, yeah, at the tight end position. Hmm. Just, the just looking hot? The waiver wire is just a gold mine. It's buzzing. <laughs> just emergent talent, week but, 16. But we'll give you the best ones. Yeah, we will. Jalen Waddle is back from the COVID list. So is Philip Lindsay. And, um, I, okay, I apologize for laughing. Will Fuller likely done for the year. Oh, come on. After a setback with his finger injury. Oh, this guy. And I guess I laughed because I've never heard of that. A setback with a, with a finger injury? Yeah. But I mean, I, I'm sure that can happen. I mean, he, that dude's body. Doesn't want to play contact sports. Uh, Kendrick Bourne's on the COVID list. Daniel Jones is done for the year. And um, Jalen Hurts does not have an injury designation for tonight. All right. So he is good to go. If you played the game, yeah. waiting for Jalen Hurts, you're good to go. And also, and Ricky, Ricky Seals Jones. Yeah. Ricky Seals Jones did practice in full. He kind of had the, uh, that scary, he was ill on Sunday as we. We know Waited and Ricky Seals Jones is in a really good streaming position because the Eagles on the season have been torched by the tight end position. But he's practiced in full. He should be back. Meanwhile, JD McKissick and Curtis Samuel are out. Just adding fuel to the fire of Ricky Seals Jones is very necessary for this team. That was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Grab the app, get the breaking alerts channel, and it is faster than every other source. Before we jump into the uh, <clears throat> that gold mine, that tight end, <laughs> the tight end gold mine on waivers, we want to thank today's sponsors, including Head and Shoulders. Head and Shoulders has been a partner with us all year. Their scalp shield technology, never not working, to give you 100% dandruff protection even between washes. I think this year's been a lot of fun. We've had the never not working segment mm -hmm. where we have picked out different metrics and things going on in fantasy football. We've we've uh, We've dived in. Dived? Dove dove in. It's it's pronounced Doved. Doved <laughs> in. We have dug deep. We have stopped um what we're doing and we've looked directly into the heart of these analytics. We're looking at analytics, not grammar. 
It's it's been a rough <laughs> it's been a rough week. I mean, I there's no other way to say it. Yeah. Um, but we've been never not working each and every week, and uh, you can get up to 100 percent dandruff protection. That's never not working with Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield technology. I'm um, available at Walmart.com. <laughs> Which they're, you can dove it over there. They're never not working, my man. Take care of that hair. Also, Foot Clan, want to thank today's sponsor, StoryWorth, this holiday season. If you want to give a gift to your loved one that makes them feel special and unique, check out StoryWorth. You're like, well, what is that? It's an online service, and it helps you and your loved ones preserve precious memories and stories for years to come. It's a thoughtful and meaningful gift that connects you to those who matter the most. And this is how it works. Every week, StoryWorth emails your relatives, friends, a thought-provoking question of your choice from the vast pool of possible options. You don't have to come up with them. You just pick which one you like. And each unique prompt asks a question you've never thought to ask, like, what's the bravest thing you've ever done in your life? Or if you could see the future, what would you want to find out? And after a year, StoryWorth will compile all those loved ones' stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. And reading the weekly stories helps connect you and your loved ones, no matter how near or far apart you are. And right now, with StoryWorth, we're giving those uh, we, that we love the most thoughtful and personal gift from our heart, and perver- preserving those memories and stories for years to come. And you can get a deal right now. Go to StoryWorth.com slash footballers, save $10 on your first purchase. That's StoryWorth.com slash footballers to save $10 on your first purchase. Put me in, coach. All righty. Let's jump into the gold mine. Oh, man. People need them. People need starts for next week. I can tell you that. There have been injuries. There's COVID lists. This may be um, this may be a gold mine. Maybe not at tight end, but but at the other positions. Uh, a lot, like I said, a lot of people are processing waivers on, on the morning uh, of Thursday instead of Wednesday. But here we go. Antonio Brown's the headline because if, if yeah. he was released in your league, there is a, a high likelihood he's the most important receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the rest of the way. Carolina, the Jets, the next two weeks, he is rostered in the majority of leagues still. I I dropped him. Yeah. No, so, I, it, you know, in our league of record, I dropped him. I needed bench spots for defenses. and Yeah, because he was marked as suspended and not in all – in some platforms, you can move a, sus- a suspended player down to the IR, but some you cannot. So he was just clogging up a bench spot, and you weren't sure that he was actually going to come back. So look for him. Russell Gage, Mike. It It's happening. <laughs> He's the wide receiver five over the last month. He gets to take on the Detroit Lions. Coming hot off of an 11 target game, eight for 91 and one. I mean, this is... After... We all got tricked, honestly. You got tricked by the slow start uh, and the injury of Russell Gage because that, like in the off season, he was one of those really interesting late round flyer type of guys. Where Matt Ryan historically has been fantastic when it comes to yardage. He had Calvin Ridley as his number one. He got he could be Robin. You weren't asking Russell Gage to be Batman, but since he came back from the He's injury, still Robin. Okay, okay, but but every once in a while, what? Who does? Oh crap! There's who, no Batman on this team. Ro, oh yeah, yeah. But Robin eventually becomes somebody else. I can't remember that superhero that he turns into. Does uh, he? Nightwing? I think. I you I'm know not a, you know uh, I'm superhero. not a DC guy. Hmm. Uh, but since coming back, he has the the two goose egg games. But other than that, he has been he's been very good for your team. It is Nightwing. Yeah, that's right. That's I mean, right. I, I knew it I, was in there. I would never heard that in my life. Well done. There, and there's other stories too. There's like a uh, red cape or something. I, I don't mean, know. That team is is. But anyway, the point is lucky Russell, to have a Robin leading the way. The, the point is that Russell Gage is seeing massive target shares. He hasn't seen under a twenty percent target share since week eleven, and it's the Detroit Lions, man. About 50-50 rostered. Devontae Parker, 64% rostered. Uh, eight targets last week and a great play as well. But if you're looking at under 50% rostered players, there's three. 
that I'm very interested in. And that's Amon Ross St. Brown. Okay. The You could have smoke fired him and it would have been fire because 11 more targets. But the question for him is, because I'm, I'm, it would have easily been smoke, or uh, I'm sorry, fire as well. But Jared Goff is on the COVID list. If Jared Goff is not back for you that, probably don't mess for that game with it. Atlanta, I I would be out. Yes, I agree with that. And then Gabriel Davis looked great, 5 for 85 and 2, has a nose for the end zone. Um, in fact, 18% of his targets through two years are end zone targets. So he looks to him there. And then MVS I thought looked great last week. They play Cleveland. So MVS for the Packers, 66% of snaps. You know, he had the he had a non deep ball touchdown, which is something you don't always see from him. And he's looked right. good. So I those are the three. Like I would play MBS over Amon Ross St. Brown if if golf was out. Yes, definitely. So you you would still go St. I'd Brown? probably go Gabe Davis. The problem is the matchup for Gabe Davis this week is New England. Right. So if you you know, do you like MBS or Gabe Davis for this week's matchup? I would I'd probably play Marquez. You know, since really getting back into it, he was injured early in in the middle of the season, and then it took a few games to really get acclimated back in. But since that time, he's averaged a twenty two percent target share, and that is like that. Not everyone getting a twenty percent target share is worth playing in fantasy football. But if you're seeing twenty percent of Aaron Rodgers' targets, you are absolutely worth being played every single week. He has variance because he is uh because him and Lazard kind of go back and forth between who's going to be the two and the three in the in that particular game plan but I personally watching him play I think he has leveled up and is a is a strong wide receiver to play that can go for 90 in a touchdown on any given week and not every wide receiver has that opportunity Tyler Johnson and Brashad Perryman could be the starting two wide receivers for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers <laughs> they, this week. They could be. I think it's actually probable that they are. It seems hard to imagine that the team would want to risk Mike Evans one week removed, even though they said the injury wasn't severe. But Tyler Johnson, Brashad Perryman missed last week due to being on the COVID list, and they mm. could have used him, ironically. But Tyler Johnson played a ton. Didn't do much. Four for 41. You know, the, the Carolina defense is pretty strong, so it's it's going to be a big risk putting these guys into your lineup. Would you agree? Yeah, it, because you just you have no idea how it's going to shake out. Um, the I, I guess I would go with Tyler Johnson um, because he was on the field so much, but I, I prob- those are guys I'm probably just stashing at this point. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd be pairing him in over Tyler Johnson. Would you? Just for, I think, big playability. I think Perryman is a better option there. Um, and then beyond that, Donovan Peoples-Jones will get Baker back. Right. So they play Green Bay in Green Bay. That doesn't seem exciting to me, but another deep league option. At running back, the most rostered uh, but best pickups are probably Jeff Wilson, who is currently oh. 55% rostered, went 21 for 110 and 1. If he's the guy. This week on Thursday against Tennessee, he's a he's a great play, isn't he? Uh, Tennessee's been pretty strong against fantasy running back, so he's a he's a good play in terms of volume. Volume, uh, but you know, like him and Devin Singletary are both interesting players with with bad matchups. But Ronald Jones is v- quite interesting here. Uh, he gets the matchup with Carolina. The, the reports that we are working on right now is that Leonard Fournette is at least out for a week. Is that the most recent thing that you guys have seen as well? No, I, yeah, I mean, at least a week. Okay, because, yeah, it could be multiples. Now, it, it, Ronald Jones won't turn into Leonard Fournette. That's not going to happen. Uh, they had Keyshawn Vaughn. Uh, oh, he was bad. Yeah, but Man, he's, he was bad. He's still, a, he's still better at catching the ball than Ronald Jones is. <sighs> He had, a, he had an ugly drop in this one. I yeah, but that's just just saying. I don't think that the workload of that Fournette has been seeing will go completely to Ronald Jones, but he's a home run hitter, and with the injuries to the wide receiver uh, position, it wouldn't shock me to see 
Ronald Jones be given 15 plus carries. Yeah, and, I mean, look look at last year, four games that Leonard Fournette missed. Mike Clay tweeted this out: 26 touches, 128 yards in one of them. 20 touches, 125 yards. 25 touches, 121 yards. 19 touches, 84 yards, and a touchdown. Yep. So, there you go. So I, I think it'll be over 15. I do. I think you're going to have to use the running game. I was trying to project conservatively. No, that's fine. That's fine. You know, I'm just trying to make Week 16 better. Oh, please. Sorry, Mike. Oh no, I'm, no. Let's do it. Let's be positive. Samaj P. Ryan, 52 touches 50, for run. That's a minimum. Uh, Samaj P. Ryan, 17 percent rostered. Probably the most available of this group, obviously. And Mixon with the ankle sprain, he'll be limited early in the week. We don't know if P. Ryan will get that chance, but he's worth picking up because, you know, what if he is the guy? Yes, if he is the guy, he's going to see a, a whole bunch of opportunities. And not just on the ground. They've this is crazy enough. Uh, despite the 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 talents of Joe Mixon in the receiving game, a lot of time on third down they have been going to Samaj P. Ryan. He has multiple games of seeing at least five targets as recently as week fourteen. He like the gold mine for running back is surprisingly bountiful here heading into week 16 with with the possibilities of replacement of like losing Leonard Fournette such a terrible time of the year for it to happen but at least there's options there's there's options that you can go with here's one that I am not buying if you smoke fired this one okay I am very out on Duke Johnson about okay. as out as you can get now he's not rostered anywhere but the team has come out and said it'll be a running back competition this week because that's what we do in week 16. <laughs> and they play New Orleans, which is a, a terrible matchup. Yeah, it is. All the players are going to participate in practice in the game plan, according to their uh, co-offensive coordinator, Eric Studsville. So you're going to have Gaskin and Ahmed and Lindsey and Duke Johnson and Malcolm Brown. That's five. If he's back, yeah. Yeah. And you, okay, a minimum of four players participating. Sure. It took. It was late in the week when Miles Gaskin got the opportunity to come back. Still had 10 carries in the game. So I, I I would not personally at any point in time play Duke Johnson this week. I, I tend to agree that I don't want to play him. I, I, I This think, was fluke Johnson. You got, oh, one, you got one week. It was against the Jets, so that certainly helps things. But over 100 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns. He had two rushing touchdowns? 100 rushing yards is the minimum that you oh can put gosh. up against the Jets. The but but here's the thing for me. I think Gaskin is done. <laughs> I, watching him this year, I don't think he is a starting running back anymore. He was ten for fifty three last week. Yeah, I he was fine. I it's don't the Jets. over the course of the season. I don't think that that he's very good anymore. Ahmed is is a fine replacement, but he's a backup running back. I think there is a chance that Duke Johnson is just the best player on this team, and. I get it. He's been floating around the league. <laughs> they they were able to just add him recently to the team because nobody wanted him on their professional roster. But there is a chance that he wins the competition. If your team is in a good position and you're not heavily going after these other running backs that we're talking about, I still think that Duke Johnson should, should be stashed. Like it, it, At least play some defense that getting into the championship weekend, maybe Duke Johnson goes out there doesn't put up prolific running uh, rushing numbers, but has opportunities and looks like Miami's going to go with him for week 17. I think you, you should at least try to block your opponents. New Orleans is number two in the yeah. NFL against fantasy running backs. Uh, the Eckler fallout would be Justin Jackson. Yes, it would. And again, that, that would be another example. I think that you would, you would have to jump on like Justin Jackson has maybe the highest upside of anybody this week. They play Houston. You know, Jackson looked good last week. You're saying if Eckler is out? Of course. Yes. Yeah. But I mean that's a that's a real possibility. And I think that I would I would play Justin Jackson with Eckler healthy over Duke Johnson. Wow. Absolutely. Thirteen for eighty six last week. Because of Houston? Because of Houston. Yeah. Or because I mean, of Duke. <laughs> no, because <laughs> b because of both, because of New Orleans, I, right. because Justin Jackson will get like, what's the best case scenario here? Like Eckler didn't practice on Monday. 
He's probably not going to practice. He could be on the COVID list. He has an injury. I'm not saying you bench Eckler. I'm saying, like, if you if you tell me, like, do you think, what's the over-under game script-wise that Justin Jackson ends up with 15 carries, 13 carries? It seems probable. Yeah, I, I maybe. Uh, like, Eckler, you know, he'll be healthier now uh, this week than he was last week, and that still only turned into the 13 carries. For he Jackson. might literally not be. Okay, fair. It's it's in the realm of possibilities, yeah. But for if you're like, what is the upside for Duke Johnson? Uh, the upside for Duke Johnson is twenty something carries, no yards, but multiple rushing touchdowns. Which Miles Gaskin has done that this year. I think Justin Jackson, without Eckler, has top twelve potential this yes. week. Yes. Oh, oh, I'll agree with that. You know, I like me some Justin Jackson. So if I if I'm looking at prioritizing, you know, what would you rather prioritize, Samaj P. Ryan? With the probability that that you know Mixon's dealt with injuries and played through them, right? Or Justin Jackson, who do you jump on? I, man, I probably go. That's interesting. Like if you lost Leonard Fournette and you're you have to have somebody to play. I guess the 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 conservative play is to go after Justin Jackson because you know he will get some work. Some work where. If Mixon is back, then P. Ryan will still just be the the backup role, and you were going to wish that you had Justin Jackson's backup role. It's a tough call between those two. Yeah, and there's so much – there's potential upside and heroics from these players at the end of the year. And, you know, what, Pollard and uh, Jeff Wilson won you a title last yeah. year? Craig Reynolds? This has, guy. Has Atlanta? This, this guy, man. Dan this. Campbell and whether Craig Reynolds would still play whether – uh, when DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams returns. If Craig goes into the game, Craig's getting some carries. That's what I will say. He's warranted that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Are you stashing Duke or Craig? Because I'm Craig. I'm Team Craig. I, <laughs> team Craig. What are we? I'm not Team Duke. <laughs> I feel like we're in a... What was the... Twilight. Vampire? Yeah, thank you. It's it the vampire movie. We're choosing sides. That was a little too quick there, Al. Oh, you know he's single. little too quick on How the many, Twilight reference. Uh, which if there's, if you want to watch the Twilight movies, that's fine. There's, it's funny that Owl Borland has seen approximately 22 movies in his, in his entire that's right. life. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen the Twilights? I've seen the first one. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Little too quick. Although, okay. So here, Foot Clan, peel back the curtain. I've seen the first Twilight. Says okay. Owl Borland. All right. Uh, Braveheart. I have you seen Braveheart? No. Mm. I offered Owl Borland. A free screening of the brand new Spider Man movie yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. And he said, No thanks. I choose to believe no, he had no so much you. work to do for us that he sacrificed this spot. Accurate. The rest of the office would have had no problem going to see <laughs> Spider Man. I know. Somebody's got to pick up the slack around here. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. No problem, Brooksy. Uh, I mean, no spoilers, obviously, but did you enjoy the movie? Oh, I loved it. Did you? Yeah. I loved it. I'm. It's in the upper echelon for you of yes. the uh, the Marvel universe. Yeah, but I'm I'm a Marvel nerd. I like it's, the Marvel movies. It was movies. long. It was very long. Could have been longer. You more. Would, you would have been just fine. Uh, with oh, it. dude, Spider Man's my favorite. Give me more Spider Man. Yeah. Uh, and, but for the question, I think I'm Team Craig. I mean, Jamal. <laughs> Jamal Williams is back. I can't imagine that DeAndre Swift is back. And Atlanta's the matchup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, all right, well, let's... Uh, and then the last one to, to mention, look for Dontrell Hilliard. He's widely available. If Deonta Foreman can't go for the ankle injury, he has been the preferred player of the team over uh, Jeremy McNichols. Let's go to the gold mine, Mike. Tight ends. Oh, you share, need a, Share with me all these these illustrious you need Kelsey fill-ins. Real, real tiny pickaxe. <laughs> for this for, gold? For, to get these nuggets out. Uh, because it's a micro machines level. <laughs> yes. I, th John Lynch just came out and said, Elijah Mitchell will be a game time decision. Week 16 against the Titans. Gross. Gross. Um, actually, I think there is one decent option at the tight end position. It's Cole Komet. He's available in over 60% of leagues. He has had several flashes, uh, throughout this season here with Justin Fields. Three top ten performances, including last night's uh, the Stink Fest. 
But the Stink Fest was nine targets that turned into six for 71 for Cole Komet, and he's taken on the Seattle Seahawks, which is – that's a pretty juicy matchup uh, in terms of if you're streaming your tight end position. But 22% of the targets, fields, they often limit how much he is going to throw. But I think you could – you could do way worse than Cole Komet this week. Ricky Seals Jones would be ahead of him for you, for me, going to the future. The the op, I agree with you. Like Komet has flashed, but what hurts my optimism with him is just where the game plan can go for them, which can be like so limited in the passing game. Yeah, and um, and so you've had. I mean, there was a week I remember that Cole Komet was. Everybody was excited about it, and it was a, you know a touchdown for Jimmy Graham, who, by the way, almost earned me a hundred dollars again last <laughs> night. That was close. <laughs> but you, I mean, the Cole Komet has zero touchdowns on the year. Yeah, zero. And when they get around the goal line, yeah, there it's Jimmy got, Graham. You got, you're His, paying that guy all that money. I, this enters the uh, if you hope for four or five points category for me for Cole Komet. So Ricky Seals Jones is at least more necessary to this offense, and they're going to throw the ball more against Dallas. So I like him a little bit more. Komet, I'm fine putting in there number two. Defensively, you've got the Eagles taking on the Giants. They're going to be without Daniel Jones again. Opportunities galore for turnovers you saw last week. Mm -hmm. Chargers. Uh, Chargers are a smash against Houston, although yep. Davis Mills has shown he is capable of um, limiting the upside a little bit. Sure. And uh, and they did have a bunch of, like it, Bosa was in the, the COVID list, right? This week, yeah, I think Joey Bosa was in in the big announcement. So, pay attention just to who's actually going to play and who's not. And then Kansas City against Pittsburgh. I mean, you have to love yeah. the way Kansas City's defense has played, and Pittsburgh's offense has been atrocious. I mean, Najee Harris gave you a a, a league worst week. Deontay a league worst week. The Chiefs, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Denver. Over the next three weeks, I mean that's that's, that's not bad. Not bad for especially how well they are playing. And the Forty ers uh, at the top of like they have Tennessee this week. Tennessee's obviously limited on offense. San Francisco's been playing great. Then they have Houston for the championship week. Sure. So that is a an opportunity there. Let's talk streams. Full stream ahead. Jay Grizz would like Justin Fields' name to be mentioned here. Has Seattle ended up the quarterback nine last night? Was it easy to really? watch? Was it easy to watch? No, no, it was not easy to watch. Was it easy to keep food down while watching? No, it wasn't. Quarterback nine, though. Really? Yeah, he took off and ran. What a week! Yeah, what a week! Yeah, he's not. He's not my stream of the week. Uh, the, the streamers this week are. Eh. If you're streaming right now, do you have the cojones, Mike? Sure. To play Tyler Huntley against Cincinnati if he's the starter and Lamar sits again. Yes. Huntley was the uh, what quarterback one on the week. Yes, I do. After after seeing that, Tyler Huntley uh, subscribes to the throw the ball to my best player over and over and over strategy that we've often encouraged quarterbacks to go with that protocol, and so he just throws the ball to Mark Andrews all the time successfully I mean Lamar has been trying to do that recently uh but he's gotten a little careless with those throws Huntley a little more precise a little more accurate with those uh, with those plays but and just the rushing upside definitely exists for him so yeah Huntley would be in I expect Lamar to be back do you really like Tannehill if AJ Brown is back this week is this your stream I do like honestly I say it's it's very difficult right now where the guys that I would be willing to stream this week should uh, the poop hit the fan. <laughs> right. right. Tannehill against San Francisco is interesting if he gets A.J. Brown back. And you have the like you have the possibility that Deonta Foreman, their their new ground to pound guy, is limited, uh, maybe out. Like that's one of the variables for him. Maybe they have to pass a little bit more. So he's interesting to me. Jared Goff, if he is in fact back. Gets to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Not that I don't want to feel like I'm chasing what Jared Goff did this past week, but the Atlanta Falcons matchup is so great. Jimmy Garoppolo should have had a monster game. Should have had a monster game, except Kyle Juszczyk ran into touchdown. Uh, which, you know, shout out to Juice, but Juice, you're killing our fantasy upside over here at the quarterback position. 
Uh, then Debo scored, and then Elijah Mitchell scored. Or I'm sorry, uh, Jeff Wilson scored. Like there was a bunch of touchdowns uh, against the Atlanta Falcons, and I think that the the Lions can still score. And then the one that don't the, play any of these guys. We're just look. We're trying to don't give, play them. Just the the question is is like, do you bench Brady with limited weapons? For no, these guys? no, 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 no. And there's no way I would do that. No, we're we're trying to just talk like, to the you, people. Would you play Jimmy G on Thursday over Ryan Tannehill? I mean, Tannehill has been probably the biggest quarterback bust of the year. Yeah. And be, I, I blame him or not, like, they, I would play Jimmy G over him, I think. Would you? Yeah. I mean, Ryan Tannehill gives you too low of a floor. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If A.J. Brown is back, which is, I think, low I mean, odds at this point. I don't know, man. I, I guess I'm just... Like, would you – let's ask the question. Brady being the standard, right? You're right. In, at this point in time, you're looking at semifinal week football. So the conversation on streamers does change. Tyler Huntley, if he's the starter, do you play him over Tom Brady? Mm, I – Do you have – I don't. You don't have the I don't. I don't have that heart of stone to make that move. Maybe. I don't know. Talk to me on Friday. Yeah, I mean, that. that's the question for me. Everybody else – there's no way you're benching an important – you're not benching a, a quarterback that got you here. Is that fair? Yeah, but there are teams that, like, you're you're relying on Joe Burrow. You're relying on Kirk Cousins. I'm not, I'm not put, benching those guys for Ryan Tannehill. Okay. Tyler Huntley is the one singular ceiling play, right? You're an underdog. Sure. You're an underdog. You gonna play Kirk well, Cousins in 87 yards, or are you gonna play Tyler Huntley with the potential of 30 plus? The the other one who I think is very boom, very bust because everything could go to Jonathan Taylor, but Carson Wentz against Arizona, there is the opportunity that they're gonna score a bunch of points. I think Michael Pittman has a bounce back week after the very disappointing one reception get kicked out. No, nope. but nope. But, can't, get, can't make me do it. <laughs> five pass attempts last week. I, I'm not making 20 you do it. 20 or worse than four or five weeks. Or, I'm not even touching. I'm not making you do it. I'm just I'm just relaying the information. No, I know. I know. And, and I'm reacting like a fantasy player should react. The information out there is tough. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> do you know that Lamar's never had a two passing touchdown, two rushing touchdown week, and Tyler Huntley just did it? I know that now. Yeah. Um, I think Huntley is somebody that that the problem is is Lamar might just be back. I I that's wouldn't that what I'm the, saying. Wouldn't that be the probable thing? I do believe that Lamar will be back. All right, so dance with the girl that brought you. I guess. All right, Traeger. We want to thank them for supporting the show. Grilling season, Mike. It never ends. Oh, it never ends for me. Especially out here in Arizona. Ain't that's no right. ain't no snow on the ground. Nope. Keep the wood-fired flavor coming all year long with Traeger. Six and one versatility. You can cook everything. Low and slow. Barbecue. Mm, did that for Thanksgiving. Classic roasts, braises, baked goods. Oof. You can monitor it on your phone. That's what I do. It's honestly... From the comfort of my couch. It's the best. It, <laughs> it, it's, it, it, that's gen, like, it's the best. And you know it out there. You've heard Trigger's name before. Mm -hmm. You already know the story. You've been, you either have one or you've made plans to get one. Those are the only two statuses that you can have. Or you have located your neighbor that has one. Right. I mean, Traeger.com slash footballers. Make it a wood-fired winner. Check them out. And um, that's going to do it. That's going to be it for us. Oh, Here on it. the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Jay Grizz <laughs> signing out. Week uh. 15 still going. <laughs> It's still football time. Oh, Lord, time. make it stop. Baby, DK Metcalf for five. Let's go. Oh, good luck tonight, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.